out here in a lovely spot in Naurua. I've got Vice Chancellor of the University of South Pacific, Director General of the Forum Fisheries Agency, and Deputy Secretary General Christelle Pratt with me. And the reason why we're all together is that all these crop agencies do work on as large aspects of the ocean. And um, the questions and uh, comments that they make are, are important for all of us. <clears throat> I mean, there's, there's a certain um, uh, sort of contradiction in my being the Pacific Oceans Commissioner, because I always tell this to people who don't know, is that I come from the highlands and my family home is at about 6,000 feet above sea level. And um, so I always say it's highlands to high seas and I take the responsibility very seriously to be uh, the um, Pacific Oceans Commissioner. So um, just for some background, you've got um, the brochure that's been presented. Um, in 2017, the leaders endorsed the Blue Pacific Identity which reinforced the responsibility of the Pacific people for the Pacific Ocean and to enhance their stewardship of the, of, of the Pacific. But the history of the creation of the Pacific Oceans Commissioner goes uh, much further back than that. Um, so in 20... Um, if you, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes for this. I should know it all off by heart, but I don't. I don't. So I think the creation of the Office of the Oceans Commissioner is really around the governance of the ocean and frameworks that were created, the Pacific Oceanscape, going back to uh, the year, what year is that? 2010. And a lot of the work that uh, should have been done has been really that has been hampered by the fact that we just didn't have the personnel, nor did we have the resources to do this. The, the, uh, the leaders were very keen that this office was created so that uh, aspects of the, of, of the ocean governance issues was dealt with. Um, many of our countries, particularly in the northern Pacific, I'd say, you know, Palau has been very, very uh, instrumental in, in in the instruments and the declarations that we have around oceans. Um, also in Ponape, in um, the Federated States of Micronesia as well. But I think last year when leaders of the Pacific really talked about the Blue Pacific, uh, the ocean continent, starting to see ourselves um, as, as a collective. Now that will always be something that we have to, as, as yesterday we discussed, that this is a an approach that, we, that will take us a decade, I think, to really educate generation, the next generation to make sure that they understand that we're not isolated islands. Uh, physically, yes, we're separated from, from each other, but in terms of our identity, we are part, part of the Pacific. In the Leaders' Retreat, um, they will be talking about oceans again. I think it's coming up a recurrent theme constantly about the management of this oceans and I'm going to ask James particularly to talk about the fishery sector and how they're doing that and the work that the Oceans Commission is doing now particularly at the moment is we have uh, staff, we have three young people who work with us, um, Penny and um, Rebecca. Rebecca are in New York now for the uh, BB&J, Biodiversity Beyond Na 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 National Jurisdictions for the uh, negotiations there and uh, Marisani is here with us. Now this is really uh, a, a big boost. We had nobody and many of you know that Christelle has been really the one that has driven and held on to the whole agenda for the Pacific Oceans Commissioner. We have also um, a group of uh, organizations right across the Pacific um, from science to civil society to institutions and to uh, crop agencies who form an org a former body that is working on the issues of oceans. On the science of oceans, I think there is a big gap in the knowledge that we have here in the Pacific. Uh, yes, we have institutions that are working on that and the Vice-Chancellor will, will speak to that. But the area that um, James and I talk a lot about and Christelle is really around the maritime boundaries issues and how very, very important that is for us in the Pacific and I discussed this yesterday with you is to ensure that we have our, our boundaries, all the treaties that we need between each other to have them secured. Um, we have um, 
I have a. I don't know if any of you have seen this, but if any of you are interested in it, this is some very piece of, a good piece of information that was provided by USP, who does a lot of the technical work. Um, SPC, sorry, SPC, who does a lot of the technical work with regard to the the, the maritime boundaries, uh, also with the assistance of the Attorney General's Office in Australia, and um, um, and other of our crop agencies, uh, and that is that. Um, out of the out of the 47 of the boundaries that need to be settled, I think I think yesterday I said 37, but it is but it is 33 that we need to do that we have done. We still have those outstanding ones, and we've been having conversations with leaders directly about the outstanding uh, um, maritime boundaries that need to be brought to, to conclusion, so that we have greater ownership uh, of our region.